Graphs are a natural way to model information about the world around us. The concept itself is not new, but it has now become more viable with the introduction of scalable graph databases like Amazon Neptune. Customers are using graph databases to build knowledge graph applications to eliminate data silos, identity graphs to provide a single unified view of customers across a range of devices, fraud graphs to help customers infer patterns in the data to detect fraudulent activities. Isn't that exciting? Hi, my name is Karthik Bharati and I'm the product leader for Amazon Neptune. In today's session, we're going to cover the new capabilities in Neptune to help you build graph applications quickly. We'll look at some of the background of Neptune and then jump right in to some of the key innovations we delivered in 2020. We announced Neptune back in 2017 and general availability in May the following year. Over the years, customers are using Neptune at scale for a wide variety of use cases and across different verticals. For example, Siemens uses Neptune to build their knowledge graph of IoT. Siemens Energy's gas turbines are used by their customers with specific configurations. Their knowledge graph models those configurations as well as the spare parts that are required to service the turbine. Another great example is Nike, who built their social graph of people, their interest in sports, and the athletes they follow. NBC Universal is another great example of a customer using Neptune to manage a graph that serves curated and personalized content. Recently, in this year's reInvent, ADP talked about their next generation human capital management platform, leveraging Neptune to model and query dynamic team structures. With databases, Customers want the best performance at the lowest cost and with highest scale. Using Neptune, you can store terabytes of graph data using open source Apache Tinkerpop property graph model or the standardized W3C RDF graph model. And you can query your data with millisecond latency. You can start running a fully functional cluster with as little as $3 a day. The entire infrastructure is secure, fully managed, and can scale compute and storage independently, giving you the maximum flexibility with both price and performance. You don't have to worry about setting up any infrastructure, and you can easily get started building graph applications. You can deploy Neptune in 21 AWS regions worldwide. With a couple of clicks, you can say create a snapshot of a cluster in Montreal as a region and restore it as a new cluster in say Sydney as another region. Encryption is available by default for data at rest and in transit. Neptune is also in scope for PCI DSS, ISO, SOC 123 and HIPAA eligibility. Industry analyst firm Forrester has published the Forrester Wave graph data platforms in Q4. It's the first full wave report that Forrester has dedicated to the emerging market of graph databases. In this inaugural report, Forrester names Amazon Neptune as a leader. You can access the link to the report from our website, awsamazon.com slash Neptune. Here's our uh, growing list of publicly referenceable Neptune customers across different verticals and a var wide variety of use cases. The link on the slide points you to the Neptune case studies from ADP, Marinus Analytics, Huge Games, Zeta Global, Siemens, just to name a few. We can broadly classify the key innovations we delivered into three big buckets, cost and performance, enterprise features, 
and integrations, including machine learning. The new label that you see on top of some of these services indicates that those features came out after November in contrast to the others that were rolled out earlier this year. Let's look at some of the capabilities in more detail, including a couple of demos. The first of the capabilities is Amazon Neptune ML. We are very excited about the launch of Neptune ML at reInvent. Many of you may have already seen Swami's keynote in the machine learning keynote. Neptune ML provides an easy, fast, and accurate predictions on graphs. It's a new capability that uses graph neural networks, a machine learning technique that's purpose-built for graphs. You want to gain insights from relationships in your data for applications such as knowledge graphs, product recommendations, or identifying fraudulent transactions. For large graphs with billions of relationships, it's hard to discover these insights based on queries with human intuition alone. For this reason, Neptune ML can automatically reveal new insights and make predictions. Ne Neptune ML automates the heavy lifting of selecting and training the best ML model for your data and lets you access predictions using Neptune APIs and queries. Now, let's look at a quick demo of Neptune ML. In this demo, we'll show you how easy it is to get started with Neptune ML. What you see on the screen is our blog post with a walkthrough of the Neptune ML capabilities. Now, imagine we're building a movie streaming application and we display the list of movies and the genre for a given user. What we want to do is infer the movies which would be rated highly by that user using a technique known as link prediction. Link prediction is an ML technique to predict missing relationships by ranking the most likely source or target nodes. In this example, we're going to use the movie lens data set collected by Group Lens Research Project at the University of Minnesota. The data set contains users, movies, genre and rating with edges between those vertices. Let's get started by running a cloud formation script, which is listed in the website. And once you do that, you would see that you have created a stack with the Neptune cluster, a workbench, export service, and a list of IAM roles to access those services. I'm going to go to my Neptune workbook, which was created as part of this example. And this walks through a step-by-step -step process in the link prediction demo. The first is to run a SIGV4 client that is required to connect to the cluster. You then import and set a list of parameters, an export URL that is listed in your cloud formation, a S3 bucket where we would store intermediate results and the ML model, and the IAM on also present in the cloud formation script. Now, this step checks if Neptune ML is enabled, which is a prerequisite for using this feature. Once that's done, I can load the data from the MobiLens website and format it in a way that can be understood by Neptune. So the Gremlin CSV format is loaded into an S3 bucket, which I feed into my load command and use CSV as the input to load that data into Neptune. Once that is complete, you can run a simple command to check for all of the graph vertices connected to, let's say, user 4, and the list of movies that this user 4 has rated. The first step is to prepare for export. You can use one of the users, either user 1 that this example gives, or user 4, like we'll use in this flow. And the first step is to identify the features, which are essentially properties on your graph, in this data set. Features can be numerical, which in this case, age is an example of a user. And feature can also be a categorical, where it would take values from a given set. A good example is occupation. 
you can use those properties in your export configuration which is a json calling out the properties here title is a string and we want it to be used as a vector so we use the word to vec and similarly for age which is a numerical value we use bucket numerical as the type and the range and number of buckets as parameters i have run this command before but this will should take roughly five minutes for this data set I'm going to copy this S3 URL and I'm going to feed it into my model training. So the model training has three steps, a data processing, which takes in the data for graph neural networks, normalizing the properties. It also builds a model selection strategy. So you can choose the best model for your data by running hyperparameter tuning jobs. And finally, the job publishes an endpoint that you can use in your Gremlin queries. All these three steps are a single command and you pass in the required parameters here with the I am on and the job name. This takes about an hour and it finally generates the Neptune endpoint. You can use this string when you query for predictions. What we've added is Gremlin extensions with predicates starting with Neptune hash ML. For example, we specify the endpoint and the I am on for a query and you use the ml.prediction when accessing an inferred label. Here, I start with a g.v a user4, navigate via the rated, and say that's an inferred property, and then navigate to the movie vertex, and then list down the properties. Let's run this query, and for user4, the system recommends that there's a particular movie that this user may be interested in. Let's rerun our original query and see if this value is present. It is not, so it's a newly recommended value. So in very quick steps, what we saw was a way to recommend movies to a given user which would be highly rated using the process known as link prediction. There are other examples around vertex classification and vertex regression that you can try out. Let's see what the other capabilities in Neptune are. In terms of cost, developers asked us for an easy way to build graph applications at low cost. With T3 instances, you can get the full functionality of Neptune at less than $3 a day, which is quite frankly cheaper than a cup of coffee. These instances are meant for development and test use cases which means once you're ready for production, all you need to do is swap out these T3 instances and add in the memory optimized R5 instances and your cluster is ready for production in a matter of minutes. The next capability to lower cost is by stopping instances and starting only when they are needed. For example, instances that are not needed, let's say over a weekend, for development purposes when requirements may not be at full capacity can be stopped. And if you need to stop it for longer durations, you can always remove those instances and still retain the storage for your cluster. For performance, the alternative query engine or the DFE is a new and experimental query engine we introduced in August with Neptune engine versions 1030 or later. The query engine offers better performance for a certain class of queries. It does this by optimizing the resource allocation and the execution path for queries. You can turn on the feature in lab mode and view the query plan for Gremlin or Sparkle to check if DFE was used. And you should see a DFE prefix in the output profile whenever the DFE query engine is used. Next, let's look at some of the enterprise capabilities that you will need for your graph applications when running in production. So customers asked us for an easy way to query their graphs, starting with the development environment. At reInvent last year, we launched an in-console experience to query the graph data. This year, we are extending the functionality to visualize your query results. 
The workbench uses Jupyter Notebooks, which is a fully managed interactive development environment with both live code and text. What we also did was to open source Neptune's Jupyter Notebook components to query and visualize graphs as a Python package under the Apache 2.0 license. This gives you three benefits. One, the Python library for Jupyter Notebook can now run on local desktops or even in other places like EC2. You can use the graph notebooks with any other graph database that supports the RDF Sparkle model or the Apache Tinkerpop model. And finally, you can now contribute to the development of graph notebooks via GitHub. If you're new to graph databases and Neptune, you'll find that we offer a number of samples in our notebook. Some of it is easy to relate with as it uses your own data. One such example is graph of your AWS resources. We used uh, Altimeter, uh, an open source project developed by Tableau in a sample in the workbench. The sample scans your AWS account for resources, builds a graph of resources, and links those resources so you can query and visualize the data for say audit or compliance purposes. Let's look at a quick demo of how you can use Neptune to graph your AWS resources. In this demo, we will show you how easy it is to get started with Neptune by building a graph of your AWS resources. What you see on screen is a blog post that provides the necessary security configuration and link to the CloudFormation template. I've run this template beforehand, and what it does is it creates a notebook that's connected to a Neptune cluster, and this notebook also installs the Altimeter project. If I open the notebook, you should see under Applications, two example notebooks, one for Gremlin, another for Sparkle. Let's start with the Sparkle notebook. The Sparkle Notebook first checks if you have the necessary permissions to run a simple query. In this case, a described cluster is to get the count. I also run this utility, which creates my RDF model of my AWS resources, and it loads that into my Neptune cluster. Just a quick check on the number of triples. You see that I have 6,000 plus triples in this graph. Easy way to visualize is to just give a SPO command, and you should see the graph of the entire AWS resources here come up in a minute. Let me zoom that. Notice that there are a whole bunch of resources in my AWS account. I can click on each of these and look at the properties. What I can also do is I can selectively go to a specific type of resource, whether I'm looking for EC2, an RDS database, and see if there are VPC that don't have any of these resources. That might be a good opportunity to clean up. Now let's look at a similar example using Gremlin. The same query exists here. I'm checking if I have access to my control plane. And I, here I have run my AWS to Neptune command. Now, instead of an RDF, I'm generating a property graph. Let me run the query to see the number of vertices. And I can look at all of my resources in my account by just running a group by on my label. And I can see that I have 34 subnets here and it's scanned across 18 snapshots and I have two databases and so on. So that is a good opportunity for me to now visualize the whole graph. Similar to the RDF model, you should see a graph that is generated here. I can zoom in and notice that there are a whole bunch of items like a routing table, an AWS tag, a security group, and I am policy and so on. This is a very busy graph. So what I can do is I can selectively query for specific resources. For example, I can say that there should be a has label. Now this graph only shows my database resources, right? You can move around the graph. 
look at only my database resources let me zoom in on this particular item this vpc has a bunch of these rds databases like one two three four five there's a security group it's tied to a kms key and so on so i can definitely analyze my resource dependencies using this query what's more interesting is i can check if any of my ec2 instances have a public endpoint there are a few i can check if there are ports that are open to anyone from a security and audit perspective that might be an important query and I can also run these queries multiple times. So imagine the resources in your AWS account changes over time. And as I run this AWS Neptune queries few times, it generates a subgraph of my resources. So I can actually query how my AWS resources changed over time. Pretty powerful if you think about it. Please try out this sample and let us know your feedback. Looking at more enterprise capabilities, we continue to improve the query language support in Neptune. For Gremlin, we introduced a load balancing client in Java for connection management and exception handling. There is a GitHub sample that you can use today, and we also published a blog post on how you can use this utility either as a standalone client or from AWS Lambda when connecting to Neptune. Neptune also supports Tinkerpop 348, that brings in the latest features and improvements such as the element map step in Neptune. For both Gremlin and Sparkle, we added support for query hints to turn off type promotion. Few other enhancements in Sparkle include uh, improved memory usage for the Sparkle group ly query and custom Sparkle operation, the unload, for removing data that is specified in a remote source. For many workloads, you want to distribute your requests across a designated set of instances within the cluster. For example, you may want to route queries requiring high processing to instances that have more memory. Now, Neptune provides a reader and a writer endpoint, but customers asked for an easy way to flexibly create and manage endpoints and route requests to specific instances. With the launch of custom endpoints, you can now specify which instance in your cluster an endpoint refers to, and you can choose what that endpoint serves. You can add or remove custom endpoints at any time using console, CLI, or even API. Custom endpoints are available in all regions where Neptune is available in. The other capability that's important in development environments is the ability to reset your graph and start over. In production, you may want to use this capability when you're periodically bulk loading the full data set. For large graphs, Running a delete query in Sparkle or Gremlin can take long and sometimes even time out because of the transactional nature. So customers asked us for an easy way to reset the graph in their cluster. Using the database reset, now you can drop all of the data in the database without incurring any IO costs. You can use a magic command in the Neptune workbench the percentage db underscore reset, and it uses a two-step process with a token just to avoid accidental deletes. Now let's look at the third category with Neptune integrations. In Neptune, you monitor the health of your database cluster or instance using the AWS Management Console, a CloudWatch, or even the audit logs. Now, you can subscribe to an SNS topic and you can be notified of events such as completion of patching, an instance failover, or changes to your security group. You, you can also sign up for event notifications on your cluster, instance, snapshot, parameter groups, or even security groups. Whenever certain events occur, 
event notifications can be sent in the form that's supported by SNS, such as an email, text message, or even a call to a HTTP endpoint when you're using this data to automate your application. Another key capability is DMS support for Neptune. Customers using both relational and graph databases today manually load their data from relational sources into Neptune. The AWS database migration service minimizes this manual effort to carry out the workflow. It now supports migrating the graph data with all of the relational sources supported by RDS to Amazon Neptune. Using DMS, you can configure destination endpoint as Neptune and DMS will carry out a full copy of the data. And using a simple mapping file, you can choose to either create an RDF model or a property graph model in Neptune. We have a detailed blog post if you're interested to learn more and try this feature out. So that's a summary of some of the key innovations in Neptune. This is not an exhaustive list, but hopefully you got a good understanding of the new capabilities in Neptune, which can help you build graph applications quickly. Do check out these capabilities and let us know your feedback. Here are uh, some of the related sessions of Neptune. You can watch them on demand once they're available. And please remember to complete the session survey. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your conference.